You are listening to the Built to Grow podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons, in studio in the quarantine of Arizona. Joined, as always, by Randy Angston. What's up, guy? Hey, buddy pal. <laughs> buddy pal. <laughs> What's wow, going man. Um, so here we are. We are deep in the weeds. Um, I want to make a quick announcement. I want to let everybody know about something that uh, is, coming cr- up. is coming up. And it's, um, it's going to be pretty cool. I can tell you there's nothing like this out there. Yep. Uh, everybody's heard about Zach Columbia, our fitness director. We've had him on the show several times. He is the guy that runs my gym. He's my right-hand guy. And, um, you know, he's come out with a book about directing fitness. As of this episode, you could probably find it at directingfitness.com or Amazon. But on top of that, he's coming out with a coaching program for fitness directors. This is the missing link to a lot of your guys' success in your business is not having that fitness director role. Call it a fitness director. Call it a gym manager. Call it a training director. It's the same role. But basically, Zach is the owner when I'm not here. Yeah. I'd say it's the the key to I don't want to say success but like growth or you know what I mean as far as like a personal as a gym owner that's a big linchpin in a business yeah without him if if he disappears I'm back in the trenches yeah exactly so basically he allows me to do the podcast and do these other things with profit and everything else with you and the the building and all the stuff we're doing uh, because he's in that seat you know the the big kicker here is you somebody's got to do the work exactly Some, that job has to get done yep. so if it's not going to be you you would want to have somebody that's trained in everything that you need them to do and he's put together an amazing course he showed me the outline the other day and you know here's just a tick you know a feather in, in zach's cap he came up with this on his own mm-hmm. i didn't ask him to do this he felt like there you know because he does work with some of the gym owners that we work with in our coaching program and He's like, man, none of these guys have a fitness director. Yeah. Like, this is the issue. Solution, problem, <laughs> there we go. So as of this episode coming out, uh, which is August 6th, it uh, it's probably out. So go check that out, directingfitness.com, and uh, make sure you buy that book. It's going to be awesome. It will be. It yeah. will be for sure. So here we are. We are going to talk about a little something today that is um, seems to be we talked about a while back, but it's starting to bubble up again. We got some new points to make about it, and that is, I'm seeing some companies out there that are are basically pitching that we're going to market well, nurture your leads for you, and you just pay them if they show up yep. to the gym. Mm-hmm. So you're basically outsourcing your lead nurture and follow up to an outside, a third party company and um, you only pay them if they show up. And so let's talk about that for a second. I mean, in theory, it's it sounds easy. It sounds too good to be true. Yeah, along the same lines, right? Like, hey, I run my marketing through your system and I pay you only if they show up. Now, granted, there's there's some things that obviously raise uh, some question marks for me like how do you know when somebody shows up if if uh if somebody shows up from that marketing that's being done on my behalf and i don't close the deal am i going to tell the marketing company that that person showed up so i so i owe money so Mm -hmm. that right there there seems to be some strange kind of uh i guess agreement that's a strange yeah. agreement regardless of that let's talk about the the cons and the pros and the cons of what this is and so um, this isn't something that we do I mean we have our own systems with CLA that you own but this essentially is you're outsourcing a piece of your business that you have no control over yeah somebody else's system you're paying for somebody else's system they run their system and they own it and they own it but but you're you know you're you're relying on somebody else to drive in the business and you're like if you're like well i only pay for the people that show up well are they doing a good job are you spending money on leads and they're not getting them to show up or if they could could you do better that's a question Absolutely. i have i mean but the big takeaway here that is i want everybody to realize is you're relying on somebody else to do a a job a piece of a piece of that job and and two things come to mind. Number one, what happens if that company disappears? There you go. You're back into doing it yourself again. 
So why not just do it yourself the first time? Exactly. Why not just do it? The, so, and the other thing that comes to mind is, what the hell are they saying to these people? By the time they get to me, I don't know. I don't know what they said, or or maybe I can see it. But is it really my voice? Is it something? Did somebody promise somebody something, and I'm going to come in, and they're not going to want that? Yeah. Or? Who's developing the offer? Is it you? You know, is it another just free play where we're just trying to get anybody through the door, and then the sales, you know, guy has to take the burden of the you know the entire process? Or yeah, there's a lot of variables that go into generating a lead and then the conversion into ideally our ideal membership right you know our avatar client like we want that type of client sitting in our seat it's not just whoever shows up i guess it comes down maybe this was created in the fact like <clears throat> okay I, th I i don't know i don't know who came up with it, but but maybe i'll tell you exactly mm -hmm. why it was created it was created because it's a solution it's an easy quote unquote easy meaning the gym owner doesn't have to do the work uh -huh. you know we've worked with Hundreds. I mean, at one point we were literally, we had, I think, 120 gyms that we were working with doing lead generation. There was a reason. It's because gym owners don't want to do it, right? Yes. They don't want to learn the process. They don't necessarily understand Facebook marketing, how to turn that into something like a CLA, continue the communication, get on the phone. Do, it's, it's a burden, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you know, and that is an aspect of this business that I would say the majority of gym owners unfortunately drop the ball on. And so they they saw that as a problem, and here's the solution. And Correct. So it's an easy sell. Yep. And maybe they're trying to get down to the point of if I can turnkey this thing enough to where that they cannot fail, meaning they can't you know not have somebody show up. Maybe I'm doing them a favor, or maybe I'm doing a great job. And it kind of leads me back to our fitness clients. If if a if a client comes in and they they can't eat right and we give them a meal plan and they still can't eat right it comes down to like let me cook the food for you and bring it to your house do they get the result they want yes but is that a lifetime of like did they learn anything or is this you know required to buy the meals from you forever forever sure and we're you know what happens are we doing the person a favor I, yeah i would argue maybe yes to get them a result but this is business and not personal. It's so, a temporary fix for a long-term problem. Yeah. Uh, everything we coach on and teach is to own the process. And you own it. You can tweak it. Yeah, but the, the problem is, Tim, it's a lot of work. And I don't want to do that work. If you don't want to do the work, you shouldn't be in business to begin with. Ooh. If you don't want to do the work, this is not a, uh, a business that you can just come in and just not do work. Or just train clients. If you want to just train clients, go back to being a personal trainer. True. True. If that's what you love. Absolutely. Or, I mean, we talk about business owners and, you know, ascending through and being able to automate, delegate, or eliminate different tasks on their personal, mm -hmm. you know, plate. Guys, if you don't want to do this as a gym owner, then find somebody in your organization that can or it will. Yeah. Like, this is, a, there is a coaching opportunity here, too. Yeah, it's very true. So, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of disappointing to see. It's And it's not that it's a competitor to us in any way because we've got our own systems. We're not providing that service for anybody as far as do it, do it for you. Um, it's just odd. It's very odd to me that I'm seeing this and people are excited about it because it, it fixes the problem today. But if, again, if you don't know what they're saying to them or if they're allowed to say whatever they want and if they disappear, you got a lot of things to think about. Um, if they go away teach a man to fish he eats for a day that, 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 i mean <clears throat> give a man a fish he eats for a day teach a man to fish he eats for a lifetime yeah. that is something that has been ingrained in everything i've ever done like i mean i think i was a kid when probably my dad hit me in the head with a rock or something yeah. and said hey remember this but not really um it, every i mean we literally made that transition because of the problem that we saw with gym owners the dependency of having somebody else do their lead generation mm -hmm. but then not being able to break away like there was no progression in the business because it was a, a it was almost like a like a linchpin i mean it, it was a dependency and yeah. i think it, i think it's always that immediate fix right now lead generation and as a whole i think gym owners are stuck on I would be like, if I could get rid of a term in this industry right now, it'd be lead generation. I could see that. I mean, I, I said this on the summit interviews today to a, one of our speakers. I said, if you, if you polled a hundred gym owners in a room, the number one thing that would come up is what in the need of your business is always, I need more leads. Yep. 
do you need more leads or do you need better sales systems or do you need better conversions or, or a delivery system to keep your clients around? Do you need, do you, can you extend those clients? I mean, it's always been more leads. Now, yes, do you need more leads to, to, to sustain over time? Because even at 97% retention on a monthly basis, you're still going to lose 36% of your clientele year over year. Yeah, you're going to need to backfill those people. But if you are doing better at your sales, even without you know, spending more on more marketing, on ads, yeah. you, you're going to just generate more anyway. And that's the thing that comes to mind to me every single time we have this conversation, or I have this conversation with somebody <clears throat> about the CLA specifically. We offer our GPS for marketing, okay? That's the pole in the water, right? That's going to generate the lead. Well, everybody has some sort of lead generation or should have some sort of lead generation, a couple poles in the water, generating leads. But every single time I have the conversation with the gym owner, I go, what do you do with that lead? After they've been called, text, you know, left voicemails, emailed, whatever it may be, the first time, they might get contacted a second time. Mm -hmm. After that, you've got another lead on your plate. You've got others, you know, down the pipeline. Those leads go to the wayside. There's value in every single one of those names and phone numbers. Over time, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these people raised their hand telling you that they're interested. They came to you somehow. Why are we throwing nine out of 10 leads every single time in the garbage because somebody else is now sitting in the seat in front of us? Why don't we increase the, the effectiveness of the conversation we're having with each of those leads? Over time. And the, over the, time. the kicker here is the over time thing. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> you know, to this point, yeah, maybe that person got nurtured to come in and they never showed up, they never responded that time. The point you're trying to make, Randy, is that yeah, you don't need more marketing. You just need to. You just need to talk to these people you already have. And exactly. You can do that for free. I mean, like, I mean, from a simple math problem, right? If we know that a hundred dollars is spent and we get ten leads, okay, they're ten dollar leads. Mm -hmm. You can. You have the opportunity to convert. Let's say two of them. Two walk through the door. Mm -hmm. Twenty dollars in actual leads walk through the door of a hundred dollars spend. Eighty dollars you essentially just threw away. Yeah. And if I don't change the process in place from generating that lead to that conversion that every single time is, it's an average, right? It's this data, 20% effectiveness every single time you spend $100. Now, instead of saying, okay, I need more leads, let me spend $200, which then affects your bottom line. Why don't we change the system in place and we turn $100 in opportunity to 40 or $100 in leads to $40 worth of opportunity by doubling the effectiveness of your show rate, fixing a broken system, not spending more money, but making more money every single time. But but owning it. Well, and do not, it in the house, not, exactly. I mean, yeah, because yeah. We, you don't know what somebody's spending on leads to generate those shows. I, it, it, we've seen some shady characters in this industry. I would be very, very skeptical about allowing somebody else the opportunity to speak to your that leads first up impression. through that exactly that's the first impression guys when the way you speak to somebody on that that lead nurture it's their first impression of your business so when they come in if they come in but if they come in that you don't know what that impression is hey tim do you, have, do you have showers at your gym or you know hey what are your lockers like or um you know okay can, can, I, can I come tour tomorrow like every one of those questions you're not going to have an answer for you know even if you have a, a, a decent you know, checklist of, you know, the gym's criteria, you don't, or that person doesn't work in that gym. They don't know the culture. Mm -hmm. They don't know the belief systems. They don't know your, your core values. They don't know the four, what's inside the four walls the same way that your employees do. Sure, sure. Every one of these is going to, nobody wants a, you know what, I really don't know, I'll have to get back to you with that. Right. In a first impression. That doesn't work. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Just, you know, okay, so, to circle back on what this podcast is about to help you guys win, I see it and I just immediately go to that's not a good idea in my head. When I saw this on Facebook, we'll nurture your leads. You only pay us when people show up. I immediately, not knowing who these people are, that's not a good idea. Like in my head, I put it through my filter. That's not a good idea. That doesn't make sense. I would not do that as a gym owner. Not because I already own the process, because I don't want somebody else to own the process. I don't want them to own it. That's my process. I need to control this. And I just want you guys to be careful. I don't mean whatever. Do what you want. But I don't think it. I put it through my lens and it doesn't sound like a good idea to me.
but it may sound like a great idea to you and you're going to do it and you're going to crush and it's going to be uh, you know rainbows and butterflies i don't know if you've, you're doing it or anybody's doing it yet i just don't i don't know just be careful be cautious yeah it's just one of those things like there's been so much just horrible people out there trying to serve the fitness community that you've been burned because we hear it every time i've been burned and uh, we recently signed up a coaching client. This is this is th- the tell of the times. Yeah, yeah. Normally, uh, we have a conversation. They think it over. We we do do business. Sure. Right? Or or hey, don't or, or don't or or hey, can I talk to mm. a past client or two? Well, this particular person had been burned. He'd mm-hmm. been burned by. He's been through a bunch of coaching. He's been burned. He spent tens of thousands on this guy, and that didn't work out. We literally had to give. Uh, and this person went outside of this list, but we, this person, particular person, talked to 15 of our past clients or people that knew us and wanted to hear the inside scoop. I mean, that's great, mm-hmm. but but that just is a tell to show you that people are very skeptical. You should be skeptical too. Absolutely. It's just there's just a bunch of crap out there that, you know, you've been burned. And it's unfortunate because, you know, talking to people in other industries and talking to people like my father's been around in business for many, many years. He goes, I've never seen anything like this crap. This I had a, I had a conversation with our buddy Zach this weekend about the integrity in this industry. It's interesting, isn't it? <sighs> it's scary. Yeah. It's, it's sad. I mean, but it's an easy entry point. There's a lot of, um, you know, gu- gullible people that are, you know, they want the best. I we, think, I, I mean, think it goes back to like you said though, the need, like uh, gym owners are we're stuck on this like i need more leads i need more leads i need more leads that if we knew the pro if we knew exactly what we were looking at we would realize like this isn't necessarily the problem or my business mm-hmm. and i think that because of the marketing over the last few years because of the in, in we're inundated with lead generation agencies and overnight you know facebook ad specialists and things like that mm-hmm. that i think we're just conditioned to believe that that's the biggest need in there like if i don't have a lead generation company doing this for me yeah i'm behind the eight ball when i would say oh it's it's massive like i should keep track of it i would say it's got to be 75 plus percent of the the gyms that actually get on a call and we have a discussion about the process they don't need more leads i could agree to that um you know and uh, we just did a, a quick training for Iron Circle, and literally in 30 minutes, I taught all, all these guys how to run Google ads. And they're running them, and they're generating. I mean, within a week's time, they were generating four or five new clients from you know 20, 30 bucks a day. You don't need anybody to run your stuff for you. You can run it yourself. Um, I personally, I'm not on Facebook right now. I'm not running ads on Facebook uh, for a couple of reasons, but I just don't. I don't feel like the intent in the in, of that that person coming in ver- versus a versus a <clears throat> google ad. we've had our best month ever of all time in the middle of this can you believe it i mean there's a lot of reasons for that but <laughs> you know normally we we do you know kind of our goal and new monthly recurring revenue here is to be delta plus four thousand meaning if we sign up five you know if we lose two thousand in revenue i'm just saying we'd have to come up with another six, six. in new revenue so we delta positive four well, we've lost maybe 500 bucks and we've gained, we're in the 7,000 range now. Boom. Of new revenue. New, right? Yeah. So if I were to put that on an annual basis, that's 80,000, 79,000, well, no, seven, $84,000 in new revenue for the year in one month. One month. And I'm just running Google ads. That's all I'm doing. And we're getting some referrals. And it's yeah. more the mouth going on. Just, just, you know, just run some Google ads. But you got to think for yourself, and that's really the point, is I don't want you guys to see the shiny ball and go get burned again. I mean, because then you know what happens? By the time you get to us, we're having to overcome all the crap you've been through um, so we can convince you, quote, unquote, yeah. that we're not going to burn you. And I just, you know, I'm trying to, we're trying to help ourselves because you're going to get burned again, again, and again, and again. If you just keep going after these things, take control. Think of, of your business as your business, and you should control the parts and pieces of that. That includes marketing. That includes nurture. That includes sales. That includes <coughs> the delivery of your product. That includes your retention and your sentient systems and your communication and all that stuff should be in your business because 
All of that being said, if one day you want to sell your operation. Thank you. I'm glad you went there. If you want to sell, <laughs> if you want to sell this operation, you have a new buyer coming in and they look at your systems in place and you're outsourcing your marketing, you're outsourcing your lead gen, or your uh, nurture to show and you're outsourcing your sales and you're outsourcing. You don't have a business. You're just patched together like Frankenstein and you don't really have anything to, to you have nothing sellable. Yeah, there's no, it's monetarily, there's quantifiable nothing. It's, you there's no it. assets. Yeah. You don't own any of it, right? And, that, and that's a conversation I have often with, with people that are interested in our coaching program and CLA. When you own something, when it's out of your head and into a, you know, like a, a binder, when it, a, a formal job description, like these become assets to a business when somebody's looking at it. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, quite often gen, um, gym owners want to franchise or, you know, step. I want to be able to to duplicate this and have two facilities or franchise this model. You know, we get into like what what is it that your business what, that makes your business unique, unique? What do you serve? What is and what, your what thing? assets do you have? What, exactly. And uh, I mean, literally, it's. Uh, I do all the training. I do the Facebook ads. I manage my team. I do all of our creative. I do networking events. Like, okay, but what happens in your business that you aren't doing? Yeah, when you remove when yourself. You, yeah, exactly. Like if the business itself, where is it? It's you. Right. And you, you can't sell that. So it's use that as a warning, guys. I, we get in a lot of calls with gym owners who have had their business for years and years and years. And they've built themselves so deep into their business that they literally don't have one anymore. And uh, it's a scary thing because I'll tell you, that, yeah, when you don't have a, a plan B or an exit plan and everything, you think that it's just going to continue making you revenue for the rest of your life. Not I, if you, you know can't what I think? Yourself. I think we should do a little bit of a shift in some of our shows and to try to make, you know, make your business sellable. I think that's a, a go. good lens to, to put things into because when you make it sellable, it means you have to do a lot of things right. And that includes having contracts and having the thing in place that has, you know, your systems. We say it a million times, but... It, Unless you have all of that, you're not really sellable. And Correct. so eventually, guys, it's gonna, you're going to get into this business 15, 20, 30 years down the road and you're ready to sell and nobody's going to buy your shit because you don't have a business that's sellable. So I think I th just came up with that idea. Yeah, I'm going to get a business broker on here, and we're going to do a we're going to do an episode on how to make that happen and what they look for. I think that'd be a really cool episode. I would, I would. And even for just, I mean, maybe it's not tomorrow or not, just, these are that's the future. That's forecasting. That's yeah. Why build a business if you don't have an exit plan? Yeah, go and start moving in that direction. Yeah. It may take you two, three years to get there, but let's move in a direction to where you're you're thinking about your business a little bit differently. And that includes owning your process, including the nurture to show. Okay. So take a look at, at Zach's uh, book. If it's out, uh, it's going to be on Amazon or directingfitness.com. And then uh, soon he'll have his, his uh, six week course for gyms that uh, are trying to groom that, that fitness director role. It's so important. Without it, I, I wouldn't be anywhere. I would be no, I'd be in, yeah, the, I would be doing be, it. You'd be sitting in that seat. I'd be in the other <laughs> office. All right, guys, hopefully this uh, got your wheels turning a little bit. Just, you know, we're looking out for everybody and we're not, you know, here to like slam any businesses for doing it. I understand why there's a need. I, I understand why they're doing it. They're trying to fill a, a need with a solution, but at the end of the day, I don't, I wouldn't do it. So, that helps. Uh, hopefully it does. Guys, keep changing lives, and we'll see you on the next show. Bye.